The sun doesn't lose its shine when covered by the clouds. Similarly, your beauty doesn't fade when you are in hijab. These are the words of the very famous Hollywood actress Angelina Jolie. Now, I don't endorse Angelina Jolie nor do I follow in her footsteps. There is a subtle reason why one must find it essential to quote her. Though there are many people around the globe who deject hijab, that is the head covering, there are other people who do not judge women by their attire or clothing and therefore these people do not question the potential of women wearing hijab. Today we will see some important aspects of hijab and the reasons why Muslim women cover their head. This talk is important for those people who are unaware of this concept of hijab or might be having misunderstanding related to this attire. So today I present answers to all the unanswered questions and issue which many people are unaware of, not only unaware of but also misinformed and indoctrinated. Before we proceed further, it is important to look at the meaning of the word hijab which is used to refer to a woman's covering. It refers to a veil or a means of covering used by women to cover themselves. Let us first see what psychology has to say about how men perceive women. Psychology says that men perceive women differently. It says that men look at women differently. Men are naturally inclined towards a woman's features as men are created in this way. It is there in their programming. I had read an article named Male and Female Perception of Physical Attractiveness, an eye movement study. This article is from Evolutionary Psychology published in January, March. 2016 in Sage Journals. It describes how men look at women. It points at three important aspects. The research says that men look firstly at the waist to hip ratio of women, then at the bosoms and lastly focus on the skin tone of women. Now there are several reasons as to why men look at a women's body in such a way which is not our matter of concern presently. My point is to stress upon this uh, fact that how the opposite gender perceives women. Some people might object and say that it is the problem of men, but we need to understand the fact that we need to survive in a society and hence men and women have some mutual responsibilities to handle based on their physical differences. While doing the research for this talk, I was listening to a lecture describing modesty in dressing by Sheikh Murtaza Bacho on a YouTube channel named Muslim Youth in Motion. I agree with the Sheikh in the lecture when he says that the society in general has started to objectify women in such a way that a woman's body is used to sell products and services to a larger extent. The speaker says that American Psychology Association describes that objectifying a woman's body creates many health problems. It says that it has been observed that there is an increase in eating disorders in young girls aged from 12 to 25 years of age in order to meet the criteria of looking good and seeing themselves as objects to please others. It also says that objectifying a woman's body creates low self-esteem and depression in young ladies, even if they have good character and morals. The society at large doesn't accept them the way they are. Having said that, what does the concept of hijab has to say about this? Hijab symbolizes resistance and stands against the society that objectifies a woman's body. Here I would like to share some references from religions other than Islam where women do follow hijab or the concept of head covering. Angela Decker, a Christian and a member of head covering movement from Toronto, Canada, has researched Bible and says that there are several verses found in it for covering the head. She says that we Christians try to follow the other commandments of God written in the Bible. But why do we neglect the commandment of covering the head? Coming to Judaism, it's a practice to cover one's head and protect one's chastity and modesty. Judaism says that her beauty is only for her husband and hence a sect in Judaism 
covers their body entirely. Maya Resnikov is a professional and an educator and a blogger where she mainly focuses how Judaism stresses on head covering in their scriptures. Coming to Hinduism, it is mentioned that women should cover themselves and dress modestly in Rig Veda, book number 8, chapter 33. There are various adjectives in the Hindu scriptures describing the nature of women. One such adjective is, she is called Stri, meaning the modest one. So earlier, all women used to cover their hair irrespective of their caste. So I did conclude after my research that Muslim and non-Muslim women both observed hijab. Moreover, it is a misunderstanding with some people that they think Islam oppresses women with head covering. When I say this, let me ask you one question. What is the meaning of oppression? Oppression is taking away someone's power. But what is hijab doing? Hijab privatizes a woman's sexuality. By privatizing a woman's sexuality, are we really oppressing her? If you notice, it is mentioned in Quran, say to the believing men that they should cast down their glances and guard their private parts by observing chastity. This is better for them. So Islam even advises men to observe hijab in a different way. For example, in Islam, it is not advisable for men to wear sleeveless shirts in front of the opposite gender who is not having any blood relation with them. Later on in Quran, it is mentioned for women that they should not display their beauty except what is apparent and they should place their wheel over their bosoms. Lastly, what is an ideal way of describing hijab? Hijab is not just a head or a face covering. It includes the way a person talks, walks and thinks. All of it should be done modestly and applies both to men and women. It elevates the dignity of a woman's body by commanding that it should be respected and covered, shown only to a man a girl marries. Islam doesn't force anyone to wear hijab. There are other Muslim women around the globe who do not wear hijab and that is their interpretation of faith. Even if you don't believe in hijab and its advantages, please understand that families who practice it do it in good faith. Let's not be someone who we vehemently condemn, means who cannot entertain the very existence of other ideology. I would like to say that I don't understand why you don't wear hijab, but still, I want to live amicably with you. Why can't you do the same with me? Lastly, calling people out for their hatred is freedom and comes from the emancipation of the soul as well as the body which the hijab has given me. Thank you.